beyond the vision of man is the world of the small. Euglena. Neither plant nor animal. Makes its own food when the sun shines. Moves around like an animal. It contains all essentials for life. Each is a single cell. Alive. Cells. Microscopic. Specialized. Simple yet complex. Cells are the very building blocks of all life. We live in the age of biotechnology. A revolution is on. But the word biotechnology is intimidating. One imagines high-tech laboratories, super-skilled scientists, a world reserved for wizards of technology, where the common man has no place. But that is so untrue. Biotechnology is high-tech, but also something that we all use in a big or small way. That was setting cards. Biotechnology in action. Biotechnology. Something that each of us practices in a big or small way. The Biotechnological Revolution Gallery helps us understand what it really is. Man has been practicing biotechnology since time immemorial. The fine skills of making bread, brewing wine and beer were also acquired early in time. Man learned to breed the best varieties of goats and farm animals. He learned to choose the best seed for his crop, picking out the desirable traits, even cross-breeding of plants. He learned to ferment choicest wines, set curds, preserve and conserve. He learned processes to acquire better taste and texture. All this through biotechnology. Through processes using living organisms too small to be seen by the human eye. The Biotechnological Revolution Gallery gives its viewers a clear understanding of what biotechnology really is. So what is biotechnology? It is the exploitation of biological materials and processes for human needs. Here microbes and cells are used as factories and enzymes as workers. For bio means life, techno tools and logi is science. Biotechnology is used to churn out food, fuel, medicine and a whole range of products for everyday life. Biotechnology is a cutting edge technology but also something that we all practice in daily life. Then, how does something as small as a cell come into the picture? Aha! Uh -huh. Because cells are life. They are the basis of all this manipulation. They are the factories and the tools. To understand biotechnology, one needs to know cells. And that's what one can do at the gallery. It's a multi-pronged world of learning. Computer-based exhibits that help one explore. Cells are the basic building blocks of life. The root of a buttercup and the skin of a rat. The nerves of an ox and the needles in the pine. Whether onions or humans, wherever there is life, there are cells. For cells are the building blocks of life. At the gallery, you can see cells, even peer inside them. But then how did man get to know something? that he couldn't even see with a naked eye? It was Robert Hooke, an English scientist who coined the word cell. The year was 1665. Hooke looked at a very thin slice of cork 
using his microscope. He saw many tiny boxes, empty spaces contained by walls, much like a honeycomb. He called them cells. He even calculated the number of cells in a cubic inch. A magnifying glass magnifies up to 10 to 20 times. A microscope magnifies up to 40 to 400 times. I wonder what Sir Leeuwenhoek saw with his primitive microscope. Sir Anton van Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch lens maker. In 1675, he used a handheld microscope and went on to describe the first living cells. A true scientist he was. He examined saliva, blood, vinegar, beer, even water from dirty puddles. He discovered and described many microorganisms. He even saw euglena. He came to be known as the founder of modern microbiology. With more and more work being done by different scientists, it was concluded that all plants are composed of cells. Soon it was accepted that all animals, however big or small, are also made of cells. Man understood that all cells are born of cells. The cell theory was postulated. The cell theory with three basic points. All life is made of cells. All cells must come from pre-existing cells. And the cell is the smallest living thing that can perform all functions of life. I'm quite amazed, baffled to think that such diverse life could be made of the same building blocks, the cells. From the branch of the tree to the ants crawling on it from humans to flowers and insects, and elephants to birds, fish and trees, amoeba, frogs, goats, even hogs. Wherever there is life, there are cells. Even bacteria and fungi are made of cells. Cells are the very building blocks of all life. Can cells live alone? Or are they always in groups? Do cells have a life? I mean, do they die? Are all cells identical? How small are these smallest living units? Questions galore. The gallery offers all the answers. Microscopic, specialized, alive. Cells that can multiply, work, live. At the gallery is a special exhibit. Slides mounted on a microscope. A microscope that magnifies around a thousand two hundred times. As we journey into the cells at this magnification, we discover for ourselves that cells look different. Their shapes and forms vary. The cells of an onion are different from the cells that make the human liver. In fact, one gets an interesting insight at the display of the types of cells in the human body. Nearly a 10 trillion cells and more than 200 different types. Let's take a look at our cellular bodies. The fused hard-working muscle cells of the heart. The disc-like red blood corpuscles, smooth and small enough to slide through the thinnest capillaries. The light-sensitive cells of the retina the long branched nerve cells for rapid conduction of impulses cells specialized in structure and form to perform the varied functions that make life possible from digestion to growth and from support to movement it is cells that make life possible cells the smallest unit of all life. But how big are these cells? Or should we ask, how small? The 
computer based exhibit at the gallery gives a good understanding of cell size. Learning at the click of a button. Whether in plants or animals, most cells are much, much smaller than the diameter of a single strand of our hair. The largest known cell is the unfertilized ostrich egg. Its weight nearly a kilo and a half. But this size is an exception. Most cells are microscopic. Imagine a house. A big house with many rooms. Now fill it up with tiny balls, every nook and corner. Imagine the number. That's the number of cells in our little finger. So you can imagine the size of a single cell. Now think of bacteria. They are much, much smaller, tens of times smaller. At the gallery, one understands the scheme of things. The hierarchy of life on earth, breaking it down to smaller and smaller units. From molecules form cell parts, the organelles. Organelles come together to form cells. Cells together form tissue. Let's say millions of liver cells form liver tissue. And liver tissue, specialized for its job, together forms the liver. The liver becomes a part of the system. This is the basic plan of life. Let's take the urinary system, made of the kidneys, ureters and the urinary bladder. Each organ made of specialized tissue and specialized cells. Specialized to perform its function of keeping the blood pure and the body salts and fluids balanced. Different systems come together to make a complete individual. Cells that stretch, cells that secrete, cells that conduct, cells that carry, super specialized cells. But if you were to see them up very close, you would find a very similar design. Believe it or not, there are only two types of cells, the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic cells. Let's start with the eukaryotic, the building blocks of all plants and animals. Take the body of any animal, take any cell inside that body and it will show the same basic set of organelles, each meant for a specific task. Mitochondria, for energy, they are the powerhouses of the cell. Lysosomes break things down with enzymes, whether food for energy or the worn out organelles. The hard-working Golgi bodies package and move protein to the outside of the cell. Nucleus is the largest organelle, the big pus, the brain of the cell, inside which is the DNA and the RNA. The endoplasmic reticulum is the transport system of the cell. It also has ribosomes attached to it. Ribosomes the sites of protein synthesis. These basic organelles are enclosed in a semi-permeable cell membrane. Each membrane-bound cell part stays in touch with each other through the jelly-like cytoplasm that fills the cell. The cell membrane is not a tightly closed bag, more like a gate that allows certain raw materials into the cell and the products and waste outside. Each living cell is like an open system where raw materials flow in from outside and are transported. Intricate biochemical processes are carried out inside the cells, processes that make life possible. At the gallery, an innovative interactive model. Here you can walk through the cell. 
It's an interesting display. A three-dimensional cell with well-defined organelles, operated by touch. The screen lights up with the chosen cell part and a crisp commentary is heard. Each cell part and its function is described briefly in this interactive model. What better way to learn? I wish I could stand in the sun and photosynthesize. I wish trees could walk around. I wish plants could talk, bark, mew. I mean anything. Why not? If plants and animals are made of the same eukaryotic cells, then why are we so different? Why? Animals are animals. And plants, plants, they are different. This difference lies in the very units that make them. Their cells are different. The plant cells have all the basic organelles as animal cells, but they have something more. The very specialized organelle the chloroplast. Chloroplast with the green pigment, chlorophyll. The pigment capable of photosynthesis. And then there is another major difference. <laughs> if animals did not have skeletons to support them, they would collapse into heaps. But trees stand tall despite the absence of the framework of bones. This is possible because plant cells have a rigid cell wall in addition to the cell membrane. The cell wall that gives the plants their shape and helps them stand tall. At the Biotechnological Revolution Gallery, one can actually put together a plant cell, like a jigsaw puzzle. A do-it-yourself to learn the making of a plant cell forever. Photosynthesis is a miraculous process. The process that makes our planet a living planet. The sun drives the process. The leaves are the factories. The raw material comes from the roots. Plants make their own food. Not just for themselves, but for the entire life on earth. Let's understand this. The green parts of the plant are made of cells containing chloroplasts carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the ground reaches the chloroplasts. With the energy of the sun, the two combine in a complex reaction and starch is produced. The byproduct is oxygen, starch, food for the entire earth and oxygen, air to breathe. The two basic needs for all life on Earth are fulfilled at the level of the plant cells. Like animal cells, plant cells are specialized too, differentiated for special tasks. Here too, the hierarchy is the same. Millions of cells combine to make tissues, and different tissues get together to form entire systems. Plants are as evolved as animals, lest one forget. Millions and millions of cells working together in these factories of life. But can cells live alone? Yes, they can. Unicellular life is just that. Amoeba, paramecium and euglena. Versatile, microscopic unicellular life. 
Amoeba means change. It lives in water. The largest about a millimeter across. Most are microscopic. Amoeba changes shape to take the food in. Ingests it in its vacuoles. It grows false feet to move. It's life in action. Paramecium is a little larger. Its entire body covered with hair-like cilia to help it swim and push food in. Remember, it's a single cell capable of life. Imagine an elephantine amoeba grew around you and took you in and ingested you in its bubble bath of chemicals. The thought is scary but impossible because cells cannot grow beyond a certain size. Growth is the most natural thing in the cycle of all life. Animals and plants share this pattern of growth. So do cells grow in size as we grow? Taller, fatter, bigger? No. Growth of organisms does not happen because the cells grow in size. It happens because cells grow in numbers. Cells have a regulated, preordained cycle of life. They also have a lifespan. They live, they birth, and they also die. Some interesting facts about cells in the human body. Stomach cells have a short lifespan. They live for two days. White blood corpuscles, the army that keeps us healthy, fights infection, lives for 13 days. Skin cells, a unique multi-layered lining, lives for 28 days. Nerve cells live for the entire life of a person, lifelong. So cells live and cells die. Nearly 30 crore cells die every few minutes in the human body. But then cells are also born. Eukaryotic cells make identical copies of themselves with mitosis. It's for cell growth and tissue repair. At the gallery is a display for observing this fine-tuned process step by step. Mitos means thread. Inside the nucleus, the chromosomes condense. They become visible. Thread like